first thing I need to do is come over here and click on the ball and choose edit. Now we've already set our settings up, so we're good there. We just need to go into behaviors. So I'm going to click here on behaviors. Notice the screen kind of grays out again, and you've got your choices over here. You have your menus for your different logic operations that we're going to add to the ball to make it react the way we want it to. The first thing we're going to do is under triggers, we're going to choose always, and I'm going to move that here. The next thing we're going to do is add a couple of extractors, and one of those extractors is going to be the Y velocity, and the other extractor is going to be for the X velocity. The extractor is under properties, so I'm going to click on it twice and add two. Even though you don't see the other one there, it's actually there just underneath the other one. See how I can click and move it? Again, one of these is going to help determine the Y velocity, and remember the Y axis goes up and down, and the other extractor will determine the X velocity, and the X axis goes across the screen. So we're going to come up here and label this one X velocity. If I click the plus sign here, I have X velocity as an option. That's what we want to change that to. And then just choose OK. And for the other one, we're going to label it Y velocity. Next, I'm going to connect these nodes. I'm going to connect out to extract for each extractor. Now we still have a few things we need to add so that our logic makes sense we're going to add a filter. If you look under logic and math, we're going to add two filters, one for each. The X and Y velocities. Click twice to add two filters. I'm going to grab one and move it here, and then I'm going to move the other filter here. Next, we're going to connect each of these straight across from value to in. We're going to click on each filter. I just want to make sure you see it says greater than zero. That's fine. Of course, you can change that to one of the other options, but we're going to leave ours for the velocity. Again, I just wanted to point that out. And notice any of these nodes, you can choose what's this. This will open another tab in your browser and then explain what each node means. I definitely encourage getting familiar with this feature and exploring the different node functions. Now we need to add some numbers. We have to tell the logic what speed to go. Again, the number is under logic and math. I'm going to add four numbers, a maximum and a minimum value for each of the X and Y velocities. So add one, two, three, and four. I'm going to grab these and pull them over here, and I'm going to move these right down here. So now we have a nice little flowchart for our logic. I'm just taking a little time to clean it up and a little bit to spread things out better. Please take a moment to do the same. So we're going to set these numbers to six. Use either the plus and minus buttons to get your number, or you can actually just type in the number. We're going to make this one negative six. And let's do the same here. We're going to make this number six, and we're going to make this number negative six. All right, now we need to connect the nodes. We're going to connect pass to end and fail to end. Pass to end and fail to end. Now, we have one more thing we need to do, which is add the velocity node. If I come over here, let me see if I can find it here. Okay, velocity is under properties, so I'm going to add velocity. I'm now going to grab this and drag this out here. And what we're going to do is this. Again, you can click on it and choose what's this if you need more information. But all we need to do is grab the two X velocities and can connect them to the X. And then down here, we're working with the Y velocity and we're going to connect it with the Y. All we're going to do here is basically saying when the ball moves, because that's what we're coding, at what speed is it moving? And speed, of course, is another word for velocity. We can test the logic down here in the bottom left-hand corner. I can click play, and it will walk through the different logic. I definitely encourage you to do that. If you want the ball to go faster, you can change these numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and stop playing the logic. And let's just say I change this from 6. Let's just say I double it to 12. 
and just say I double all these numbers. We're going to see what it does. So change your sixes to twelves and change your negative sixes to negative twelves. And now I'm going to play the logic and I can see the ball bounces a lot faster around the screen. Okay, so go ahead and make sure you have the logic for your ball. The next thing we're going to do is add sound effects. See you in the next video.